Welcome to another episode of The Brand Called You, a podcast and podcast show that brings you leadership lessons, knowledge, experience, and wisdom from thousands of successful individuals from around the world. I am your host, Ashutosh Garg, and today I'm delighted to welcome a very, very accomplished professional from the UK, Mr. Kevin Bryant. Kevin, welcome to the show. Thanks so much. Nice to be here. Thank you. Kevin is the Chief Executive Officer of Educated Change. So, uh, Kevin, before we start talking about educated change and all the work you're doing. Tell me a little bit about your own background. Uh, let's see, short story. I um, <clears throat> was born in the, in the United States, so I'm, um, but I, I'm actually dual citizen, so living in the UK at the moment mm -hmm. on the coast. Um, <clears throat> I uh, started sort of professional life in, um, in banking. I went to a, a business school, I'll just mm -hmm. point that out, Babson College, very good mm -hmm. private uh, business school specializing on, in entrepreneurship, but uh, I didn't really start uh, in entrepreneurship. I got in, into banking mm -hmm. uh, first and foremost um, and had a 20 year uh, career, uh, I think did pretty well. Uh, it uh, had a number of uh, senior positions culminating in uh, general manager, uh, was a general manager of our European operation, which is mm -hmm. based in was based in London at the time, the large regional uh, US bank, Bank Boston. Uh, and then I, uh, making again a short story here, uh, decided I wanted to try a ent more entrepreneurial experience. I think a lot of bankers think that uh, having worked with a lot of entrepreneurs, that, yeah, I can do that. Uh, uh, it's, uh, I'm smart, I'm as smart as those guys. And so, um, so I had my first sort of entrepreneurial experience uh, um, helping to run. Mm -hmm. I was actually notionally called the uh, president of the shipping company, mm -hmm. uh, Greek shipping company of, of all things. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I got thrown deep into the rough and tumble world of uh, shipping and uh, small business. It was a pretty good sized business. We had 20, 20 Afro Max uh, tankers. We were shipping uh, oil across, across the med, mm -hmm. really trial by far by okay. fire. Mm. And uh, so I did that for, for a couple of years uh, and, um, and then retired. Uh, so, as, so I thought for several years and uh, pursued some other interests and then ultimately got into this business that it's called Educated Change, which we can, we can talk more about. So Kevin, uh, tell me a little bit about this venture that you started, uh, Educated Change. What do you do here? So uh, props to my, my, my business partner, um, uh, Pete Klein, who had this, this, I thought at the time, crazy idea to start this, this business in the social media space. And that was, what, 13 years ago, before social media was something that people thought of from a business standpoint, except for sort of uh, B2C, it was it was becoming a thing in B2C, but not really in the B2B space. Mm. And... Um, so he had this idea that it was going to become a big deal. Um, he had another company that he'd started some time ago and sold. And the way that he got um, developed presence um, and really promoted the business was, was through LinkedIn mm -hmm. at the time and other social platforms and, and realized that, you know, actually he had sort of, there was the birth of, an, of another idea uh, mm -hmm. as he was developing that company. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've been friends for 20 20 years or so, and I had left the shipping company and was was uh, ready to get back in into uh, back into the business world, so to speak. And uh, he said, "Look, I got this thing's going to be. I think this is there's there's something there's mm -hmm. something here." And so we, it, in some ways, we, we say it was an excuse to to play to play together, <laughs> kind of hang out. Um, our first uh, our first headquarters actually we still sometimes call it. Uh, today that the clubhouse it's a it's great space and a wonderful place mm. and um so we just sort of started thinking about uh, and and sort of prophes prophesizing about this new world of social um taking it around uh, the city in london and trying to get people's uh, uh get people engaged in understanding where where the future was was mo was headed and mm. so <clears throat> when we started to um First, we'd kind of just for free, we'd go around and talk to people. And then a couple of years in, people started to hire us mm -hmm. uh, to come to talk to their people and kind of, you know, what's this new world of social? And that's where that's where the business started to, to, to develop. And, Amazing. Um, so, you know, when I was... Reading, I, 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 
sorry, go ahead. If, if, I, if I can just also add, add here that although it's social media is the, the let's call it the vehicle or the platform, um, we ultimately, the, the name, the, the, the clue is in the name, you could say, right? Educated change, we, we at the core were about change. Uh, both of us have really an interest in this topic from a lot of different angles, but it's about um, helping people and leaders navigate change, foment change, adapt, deal with change. And that's kind of, we, we wanted to be in that space somewhere. And so social really was a great vehicle to uh, kind of a, almost a conversation piece to drive the bigger conversation, the more important conversation, which is mm. how to change and how to make change and whether it's about yourself personally or about the, the world mm. at large. And so that's kind of sort of the secret, not so secret, but sort of the secret mission. Fantastic. Thank you. So, you know, when I was reading about you, you also state that you have applied science and technology to social networks, social selling, personal branding, influence, and leads. Help yes. me understand this and please give me an example. Okay. So a lot of it is, um, uh, I mean, there's a lot of freeware out there and a lot of tools that we, before we had developed our own um, software, we, we learned how to use a lot of the platforms that really help you be all you can be and connect with the most people, whether it's a Hootsuite, for example. Um, uh, or it's um, or it's real or it's the the platforms themselves. Understanding how the algorithms work and how do you get the most out of those algorithms. So that's kind of where we started. And then as we worked, uh, like so many things in our company, it's been a lot about opportunism. It's a lot about following our clients. Mm -hmm. And we developed ultimately uh, a, a, one of our kind of key uh, pieces of software is uh, is a. Um, a tool which allow we call them change reports. Mm -hmm. A tool which allows people to go in or us to go in and scan and develop and find. Well, what where is this person? Mm -hmm. what, what what platforms are, are they on, and how are they appearing on those platforms? Mm -hmm. What keywords are driving or informing people's search activity and and engaging? Are they engaging around the right words? How does that compare with their competitors? How does that compare? with their colleagues. Mm -hmm. um, and we developed also kind of a scoring system, which uh, helped people to understand where where were they on this kind of assault of, of Mount Everest when mm -hmm. it comes to anything. So it, uh, it started as a one page uh, report, first done manually, and then we figured out how to apply some software to it. Mm -hmm. And then it's now like a 16, 17 page sort of personal brand audit report. And that's what drives a lot of when we're positioning people's profiles and tuning, optimizing their profiles. It's become a, a, often a starting point for that work. So that's one thing. The other thing that we're really excited about, we, we developed some other things along the way. And mm -hmm. I should say we've got a whole team, this whole team of uh, uh, consultants, uh, uh, um, programmers based in India, actually, who, who helped us develop a lot of the software um, but along the way we we also um, r realized that um, we we needed to help people listen and mm -hmm. and really instructive time for uh, for us and i think for a lot of people was the mm. pandemic right pandemic time and it was it was it kind of smacked us in the face mm -hmm. it was okay there a lot of uh uh, there's a lot more demand for digital while we're in this pandemic time, mm -hmm. but there was a lot more sensitivity around certain types of topics like COVID in particular. So mm -hmm. some people, uh, you know, wanted to talk about COVID and wanted to understand what they should do and how is their world changing and, and so on. Mm -hmm. Other people didn't want to talk about it. Mm -hmm. and, and a lot depended on what country you're in what region you're in where were where are you in the whole cycle of covid the cycle mm. of pandemic mm. and so we studied actually uh the cdc's uh, emergency uh communication uh uh methodology you know how do they communicate when there's a when there's a crisis like a mm. pandemic mm. and so we we followed their their there's a whole cycle i don't spend too, too much time on on that but uh, it's clear that depending on where you are in that cycle of first recognition, 
maybe first there's doubt, then there's recognition that we've got a problem, used to be the problem. And then what do I need to do? You know, PPE, et cetera, et cetera. What, what's, what are the right steps mm -hmm. that I need to take to make sure that I'm safe and the people who matter to me are safe. Mm -hmm. And then at some point at which you get to the, the top of that cycle, things are kind of in hand and you could say, I hope we're there now mm -hmm. and we're now coming down the other side. And so the people want to talk perhaps more about what's the future hold? What is, you know, what is the future of work? For example, mm -hmm. we were talking mm -hmm. earlier, you know, hybrid work, remote work. There's now a whole different way of working together a lot because of that. And then um, also what, uh, what is it, is it appropriate, assuming it's appropriate, is it appropriate to maybe take some bows? You know, what are the lessons learned? What did we do well, not so well? So that's a different kind of conversation. So that whole process for us really emphasized uh, the, the, the critical nature of, of timing and the communication of understanding, of listening. Mm -hmm. So the whole social listening space became big for us and we developed some software which allows us to listen to thousands of conversations at scale mm -hmm. um, for um, and of the people who matter so not like just you know a million people but for say if i'm in the life science space i want to focus on these 1000 life science people and understand what are they engaging around? What are they talking about before I just go in and start talking about COVID or just talking about um, clinical trials or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. So we understand through the software where people are and we can go in, we can look the big picture where there's a group talking and, and thinking and, and engaging, engaging. Mm -hmm. and we can help our clients figure out, okay, this is a great place for you to go in. You've got a client or prospect who's talking specifically about the things that you guys are expert in, perfect time for you to go in and comment or engage or whatever around that. Mm -hmm. So that's been really quite a big, uh, a, 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 a big bit of tech for us um, to, to help our clients. You, you also form. do a lot of work in the area of personal branding, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So uh, let's uh, talk for, for a few minutes about personal branding. Uh, since you are, you know, so deeply uh, uh, entrenched in social media, my question yeah. is, what role does social media play in building a personal brand? Uh, well, these days it's essential. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> uh, uh, I mean, if you if you want to grow your your presence, your network, um, uh, there's a great book. Uh, well, it's a good book. I don't know that I would say great, but it's a good book called The Fourth Turning. Perhaps you've heard of it. Perhaps you've read it, mm -hmm. uh, where it talks about cycles. And so at the moment, the the suggestion is that we're in the fourth cycle. There's a lot of stuff going on in the world that's not necessarily positive, uh, uh, a lot of turmoil. And uh, it's uh, we're in that fourth turn, according to the book, before we kind of start over again. And, and so it's an interesting theory, and, and uh, it, it may or may, but may not be true. But mm -hmm. but one of the things that I really kept, clicked on in reading that book was this notion that in these times of turmoil and trouble, when institutions are kind of coming apart, and there's the trust factor isn't there like it perhaps used to be in governments and companies and um, and, and institutions, and so the 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 sustaining piece or the, the thing that's going to get other people's attention, that's going to uh, connect you with people who you need to be uh, connected with is, is your personal brand. I mean, ultimately mm -hmm. through it all, it's going to be, it's not about the big brand per se. It's about the personal, your personal brand. Mm -hmm. and, and so to, to do that in this world, as I say, in this digital world, you're going to have to use the tools that, that are available and social is one of the, um, the, one of the most important tools to use other than email, which allows you, of course, to communicate with people at scale, to create that presence that a lot of people hopefully will, will mm -hmm. connect with and engage with if you do it right. And that's part of our, our expertise, we think, is helping people. Well. So, uh, Kevin, given all the work that you're doing, is behavioral change a precursor to building one's personal brand? Uh, it's an interesting 
question. I think um, it goes in both directions. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I, I mean, I would say well, behavioral change, change yes, in the, in the sense of you've got to have a discipline around yeah. it if you don't already have a discipline. So there's yeah. clearly behavioral change that must be applied in that way. But I think if you, you know, most people we're talking to, clients who we're talking to, they it's it's not the discipline piece isn't hard. It's just the changing, mm -hmm. changing bit, which mm -hmm. is I'm used to doing things in a certain way. I'm used to shoe leather marketing. I'm used to going to events and conferences. I'm used to being on regular, you know, the old fashioned phone or whatever. Mm -hmm. And starting to use these tools, they're not hard, they're not difficult, but it just means uh, having that, um, what's, what's the word, what's the word, that placidity, placidity, mm -hmm. placid, uh, of, of not placidity, but the, the plastic aspect, mm -hmm. um, plastic aspect of the brain, which allows you to uh, adopt new and different um, skills. But on the other side, which I find in some ways more interesting is through using social, through using um, these platforms, it will undoubtedly change you in fundamental ways that a lot of people don't even really think about. And it's not right. kind of what we lead with and we're selling. Mm -hmm. It's not about or just about um, uh, I, I, okay, I'll say, I put it this way. I say the most important person who's going to see your profile is yourself. Mm. Because it's like looking in the mirror every day. If you're in these platforms all the time, you go to your profile page and you see, oh, that picture. Mm. Uh, oh, the way I describe myself. Uh, is it is it somebody who you want to be? Does it represent who you are as a person? Mm. Uh, and it actually it reinforces and helps you to focus on what's really important and relevant in terms of your personal brand. Mm. And then in terms of the reaching out to people, you start thinking more and more about people mm. than you did before, guaranteed. Mm. So you're going through this process and discipline of what networking is all about. Mm. Um, I'm meeting you today, so now that's logged in. I went to your profile, saw what you were about, what you did. You didn't have to give me a long intro because actually I already knew a lot about you. So that um, is the important part of, as I like to say, warming the bath water mm -hmm. so that you can have that conversation at some point. You've started to build the, the trust that's necessary to be. Very interesting. Uh, I have time for two more questions for you. Uh, my next yeah. question is on culture. You know, you live yeah. in a country... Uh, both the UK and the US, which are very, very multicultural. Yeah. I want to get your perspective as an expert. How does culture impact personal branding? Um, so, uh, I mean, culture is, is, is an essential ingredient both for you, for me, and understanding, uh, you know, who am I? <laughs> What's my purpose, meaning and purpose, and so on and so forth. That's really important in terms of defining your brand and recognizing how and who you're going to perhaps want to connect with. But then also in working with our clients, understanding, well, uh, in the West, for example, in the United States, okay, the United States, let's start there. The U.S. is very au fait with social in general. Yeah. That is a concept of talk or Twitter, or whatever. Mm -hmm. That's old news for them. They're comfortable with that space. And to a fault, as you know, sometimes mm -hmm. we're, we're amazed at what our, our kids might share on social, what we wouldn't have done, or we we don't do as, as old, mm -hmm. old, old, old people, mm -hmm. <laughs> older people. Yeah. Uh, in some, uh, at, at the same time, contrasting with some of the uh, European countries, like say in Austria or Germany or Switzerland, mm -hmm. there tends to a lot more uh, privacy, sense of privacy, sense mm -hmm. of uh, uh, distrust, let's say, about some of these social channels. And mm -hmm. be careful, don't share too much, or, or, or cybersecurity, all those things. You there tends to be a heightened concern mm -hmm. about those kinds of things. So when we're, as we're advising our clients, we have to come in and understand that um, in India, for example, another country which is quite comfortable with uh, certain uh, social media platforms, mm -hmm. quite quite active and quite um, in engaged, the people very engaged. So I, I need to come with that understanding, and our clients, of course, also have that have that understanding, so that they're not 
speaking outside of the kind of the the the, the lane mm. that's going to be uh, culturally acceptable in those mm. those locations. Very interesting. And my last question to you, Kevin, and this is for the thousands of people who will listen to our conversation. Based on all your uh, understanding of social and branding, what would you say are three lessons you would want our viewers and listeners to take away? Uh, okay, uh, three lessons. So um, focus is first and foremost. Mm -hmm. Focus, focus, focus. Um, use uh, social with intent, mm -hmm. with intention. Don't just think it's all about getting a huge audience yeah. or, or or whatever. Okay. Second is what topic we've been talking a little bit about and around, which is the the trust factor. Mm. So what you're really trying to develop with social, with the help of social, is is trust, is the sense that that person mm. or that avatar behind it sits a person who uh, I feel like I understand what, what they're about, what's their why, or what's mm -hmm. the, you know, the purpose and meaning piece mm -hmm. is really, really key to understand first about yourself. This is, again, where social informs and helps us create yeah. our own personal change is understanding that, mm -hmm. that aspect. Um, and, and then the, the other piece is just the whole uh, uh, sort of networking game uh, the importance of understanding the, the tech part, mm. the, the, the tools that are going to help you um, broaden, grow your networks um, as, as appropriate. And um, that, that is a, a huge piece is understanding, uh, applying the data side, the data insights that are going to allow you to connect with the people who matter with, with the content that matters. Mm -hmm. So that those would be those three. Fascinating. Three Fascinating. And on that note and your amazing lessons, focus, 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 use social media with intention, trust, develop trust is important um, and understand other people's why. And the third one you said was how important networking is and also how important it is to understand the tools that are available for networking. Thank you, Kevin, for speaking to me about your own journey, about all the great work you're doing in Educated Change. Thank you for talking to me about both social media platforms and the different ways that people can use social media and also about personal branding. Thank you again and good luck. Thank you. Great to meet you. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the Brand Called You videocast and podcast platform that brings you knowledge, experience and wisdom of hundreds of successful individuals from around the world. Do visit our website www.tbcy.in to watch and listen to the stories of many more individuals. You can also follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Just search for the brand called you.